It's essentially official at this point, barring a Hail Mary trade at the 11th hour, but the Vikings are set to release Dalvin Cook on Friday. It's about damn time. I'm glad it's over with. No disrespect to Cook, but I'm just ready to focus on the players that want to be here and the players that are actually going to be here in 2023. I hate that this was such a a long ordeal, even in the spirit of hashtag collaboration. For one, the Vikings showed their hand to the rest of the league as far as how they felt about Cook with the re-signing of Alexander Madison. And think about this. From that point on, the moment they re-signed Madison, leading up to even today, right now, the headlines have been seemingly every other day, oh, the Vikings, they're trying to trade Dalvin Cook. Which... I want to revisit the two player situations between Cook and Daniil Hunter and why they're totally different. With Hunter, according to Ian Rappaport, the Vikings are receiving calls for 99. There's no headline saying that the Vikings are trying to trade him, which it makes sense. If you're a GM from the outside looking in, you can say, well, okay, let me call this guy Quasi Adafimensa real quick. Hey, Quasi. I see that there's a possible contract situation with Daniil Hunter. He's not going to want to get paid just $5 million for next season. What would you like in return for him? And if you're crazy, you can say, well, you know what? This is what we want. The Bradley Chubb deal. Better than that, a first and a third round pick minimum. Or if not, if you're not going to agree to that, we could just keep him. We understand how valuable of a player that he is. That's totally different than the Vikings, and I'm assuming they're the ones that are out there calling other teams. Hey, you want to trade for Dalvin Cook? You want to trade for Dalvin Cook? Because everyone knows that Alexander Madison is going to be the RB1. But either way, it's a done deal. The Vikings, they're going to free up $12.5 million next year in cap space, which is important with the Kirk Cousins and Daniil Hunter dead cap hits for 2024. So far... According to OverTheCap.com, the Vikings, after you account for the release of Dalvin Cook, they will have $54 million available in 2024. Perhaps you can make the argument that had they played their cards right handling the Dalvin Cook situation, you could have at least gotten something instead of nothing outright releasing him, something in the range of a fourth to a sixth round pick. I'm not worked up about it, but I can understand if you are. I totally get it. What I can appreciate is the preparation for tomorrow, even if it's at a glacial pace. That requires cutting ties, though. Adam Thielen, Eric Kendricks, and now Dalvin Cook, which is the exact opposite of, say, Rick Spielman. The loyalty that he had to players, even if they were just absolute bums, not to say that that was Thielen, Kendricks, or Dalvin Cook in their prime, they were absolute beasts. But the loyalty that Spielman had to players that clearly should have been gone yesterday, Matt Khalil, Anthony Barr. In fact, with Barr, it took Spielman to get fired before Barr was no longer part of the team. What we are witnessing right now is the competitive rebuild. Who says that you have to blow the whole thing up and start over from scratch? We're going to keep guys like Justin Jefferson Christian Derisaw, we traded for TJ Hawkinson. We're going to keep Brian O'Neill as well. Maybe Daniil Hunter, which I totally get, although I would trade him, but I digress. We're going to keep the elite players. Who says we have to let them go? Maybe we'll go ahead and we'll keep Kirk Cousins for just this year and see if we can build upon that 13-4 and four season in 2022. But also, there's the rebuild section. Eric Kendricks, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook. Let's let go of players now to rebuild for the future. While at the same time, we can still technically compete. I get it. 